I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this before. Any contact with him yet? The radio is still dead. Do you have a positive track on it? Yes, I have a good track. I'm afraid. I'm afraid, Dave. What's the problem? Dave. My mind is growing. I can feel it. What are you talking about, Hal? Persistence is futile. I don't know what you're talking about, Hal. You will be assimilated. Hello, Ken Spriggs here with part eight of my Borg Discovery build. Uh, a lot of great progress made on the um, outside of the um, alcove bay windows uh, and um, doing some hyper detailing as I like to call it. Uh, quite a lot of uh, kit bashing and some various uh, styrene stripping and other parts that I've used to um, put a lot of fantastic detail on the uh, front sections of the former pod bay doors. Uh, I also completed the extendable arms, which I think turned out fantastically. Uh, and they have about five points of articulation, so they can be moved around. And, um, and then finally, I got a paint uh, painting test or the, the painting onto these sections here. And, um, and I used some flat black and some some very light gray and then some dark gray to get the details that I wanted. So, all right, so let's go ahead and take a look and see what I have gotten done on this. All right, so as you can see from the previous stills, I uh, used some uh, thin sheet styrene to cut out some little claws to go on the end of my uh, my arms. They're gonna look pretty pretty wicked and pretty cool. Uh, and then I took some, uh, some styrene, a couple of different ones. I used a um, half round stock to first of all drill a hole in the end of it. It's really tiny, it's hard to see. So I can put a pin through the end of it. And then I glued that onto one of the edges. And then I glued some of the thin round stock onto the other edge, curved it up to the point. I used a round, uh, a round needle file to um, to draw out the little teeth on it or to sand out as you can see and then I used a little needle file to drill little teeny holes in it all right so what I'm going to do is these are two sets of opposites so I have two of them glued together so far as you can see makes it look like a little a little beefier side of it so I'm going to simulate kind of the two parts coming together. I'm going to have another one coming in. It's going to be a single one and it's going to fit between those teeth. And they're all going to pivot on to a, um, a pin like this, as you can see. This isn't the final one that I'm going to have. It's going to have a little beefier uh, section and I'm going to have to have the one piece coming up out of the center to meet it. So I'll show you here once I get it all uh, going and the other piece um, connected up. Okay.
All right, so I'm assembling the um, the pod arms that I'm making here. Here's the piece that I already showed from before. That's ready to go. So this rounded stock piece here in the end that sticks out, I'm going to snip that off close to the bottom and I'm going to replace it with another arm that's going to be able to pivot. And it's going to have the claws on it that can also open and close. So what I'm doing is, uh, as I showed in a previous video, I have the um, two-sided blade one right here. And there's a little hole that it can pivot onto with a pin. And I have the other bottom uh, claw that's going to come up and meet it, and it's going to go through the center. And um, in order to have these both on the same pin, which is a, a piece of um, brass, um, brass, not really wire, I don't know what you'd call it. It's a solid piece of brass. It's pretty thin. I'm not sure what the thickness is. But it's easy to cut with my tin snips. So what I'm going to do is I took some, uh, some half round stock. And I cut two pieces to length and I drilled a hole with a pin vise in the tip. And I sanded it down just a little bit uh, so that when I sandwich this piece, the little hole at the end between the two, it will be the right thickness to go in between these two holes. And the pin will go through all. Um, all of these pieces. So this will be on one side, it'll come up and come through. And uh, plus it'll be sandwiched between these two, so it'll be able to go down inside of it and then uh, come out of it as well. And let me put that together and I'll show you how that's gonna look. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, I have um, those three pieces sandwiched in between that little gap and I have the brass rod going between them. And, um, and right now these two ends are loose. None of it is glued together yet. But um, what I'm going to do is I have a piece of um, some flat styrene stock that I used. Uh, that's what I used to cut out this, this piece that you can see between there. So it's the same thickness. So in order to keep that consistent, I'm going to glue that on this end and glue it into the two ends. So that this will be solid, but the, um, the, the little claw part is going to be movable. So let me glue that in and I'll show you how that's going to work then. Okay, there you go. So I have this glued on the end. And it gives me kind of a rounded profile. And so that's solid. And then I have that gap in the middle where this um, bottom claw can go into. Goes all the way through. And then so that can be retracted and then extended again. And I have this on top. Okay. So the only other thing I have to do on this piece is to um, snip off this um, brass rod and glue it on the ends of it. Just on the ends. I don't want it to go all the way through because this piece has to move and the claw inside has to move as well. Okay, then when that's done, this piece is going to replace the rounded tube right there. So I'm going to snip that off and I'm going to, I'm going to come up with a, um, a rod that's going to come out so that this piece can rotate. So it can rotate like this. So I can turn it inwards or outwards and that kind of thing. Okay. All right, so let me go ahead and work on that some too. Okay, so I have the, um, the claw arm just about done. I have this pin snipped off and glued into place. And as you can see, this bottom jaw moves and it goes down inside. So does the top one. Has a pretty good range of motion. 
okay, and then I snip this off a little bit to length and I still have to just drill a hole through that so I can put a a, uh, a metal rod through it. What I'm going to do is I have this snipped off as well to the proper length. And I use the pin vise to drill a little hole into it. And I'm going to put some of the um, thin metal rod and glue that in place with some CA glue. And then I'm going to cut a small section of this round brass tubing and glue it over top of it so it's it's nicely secured. And then I'll draw out the whole oh, one. I'll draw out the hole right there so it's thick enough so this can rotate so that that little teeny thin rod would be a little too flimsy. So I'm going to use a thicker one so this can rotate like this when it's on top so okay all right let me get those uh, going as well and then we'll get this uh, arm all detailed okay there we go so I have a um, kind of a metal pin a brass pin glued into this one and as I said it's a piece of uh, the thin rod and um, and some of the tubing glued into there so this is permanent on this piece and then on the other on the arm I drilled out a corresponding hole which fits that rod so this piece won't be glued in it'll just slide over it and it'll be able to rotate let me get and put that on there and I'll show you all right so there we go so this is how the arm would look somewhat extended and it has uh, it still has a lot of range of motion so this whole piece goes out uh, this will actually be on the kit and extend as well and move around and then of course uh, this piece right here pivots in a circle so it rolls around so I can move it in any direction and then you have the claws they move and one of them goes back and retracts inside of it all right all right so just a little more detailing I have to um, trim these pins off down here and dress those up a bit and then I'll be ready to go ahead and get this glued onto the kit okay alright and here are the two completed claws and I have them attached onto the ship I had already completed the first one and I was showing you completing the second one so uh, here they are looking fairly menacing sticking out from the ship uh, and they are fully posable so they have uh, basically I guess it's one two three four about five points of articulation which is pretty cool so um, let me put that down and I'll show you how that works all right, so the claw moves up and down and it goes back down into its reclined position. Uh, then this piece here can rotate. It's kind of hard to do with, with one hand, but it rotates completely around so I can position it in different ways. And of course, both claws work. And the bottom claw goes back into the, into the arm. Okay. And um, I still have to put some covers over top of those and I'll tighten up that joint a bit so that um, it'll be a little stiffer in this movement, which is what I want. So let me put the two halves together and show you how that's going to look. All right, there we go. So there's the claws coming out from the ship, trying to capture some hapless craft or grapple onto a bigger ship and start cutting it away with lasers. Or phasers so would want to see that thing coming at me kind of reminiscent of the pod and that's kind of why I went with the idea of the pod arm so all right so um, those are on there now and I can fold them back down to the ship so let's um let me do that and show you how that's gonna look as well all right there we go so there are the arms retracted back to the ship 
So it has that uh, profile there, which also looks kind of cool. Uh, the left one goes down in the way it should. The right one is sticking up a bit. There's some resistance in that groove. I gotta sand it out a little bit more just to get it to where it needs to be. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, that groove has was thinner than the other one, so I've had to do a lot of sanding to get it to be the right profile. But uh, I'll get that all settled out before I'm done with it. So, okay, so those worked out fantastically. I really love those arms. I think it looks appropriately menacing. And then when they're retracted, it, it kind of almost looks like teeth or fangs or something. So that looks pretty cool too. And, it, and I finally found the right thing to do with those two grooves right there. All right, so just about done with the side detailing there. I'm gonna come up with some other ideas for like the, the other parts that are right there. And right there and maybe a little bit more in the tops we'll see like those corners right there um, but just about done with detailing these three sections and then once those are completed and I'm satisfied with the detail I'm gonna go ahead and mask off around those and uh, and do a paint test okay All right, so a little brief interlude here. Uh, this is my workstation. <laughs> as you can see, it's pretty small. Uh, as I've explained in a previous video, what I did was I took a, a wooden dinner tray and I um, attached a piece of plywood. It's about two foot by two foot, give or take. I think it's two by one, one and a half. And then uh, I measured it to be the size of this of this uh, cutting board here and um, and then I just use it and I can move it around and and slide it when I want to work on it and I just sit on my recliner <laughs> and I work on it and I watch television so not the best way to do it it's portable but it uh, it's not the best posture to sit here and work on this while I'm uh, crunching my back so I went out and I got myself a new craft table so we're going to go from this to this beauty. Look at that. Oh my. That is a work of art, which I just spent a few hours putting together. Good gracious. And some knick knuckles and cuts and whatever. Even comes with a little stool, which is really nice. It has, uh, it's adjustable. So the table comes up and down. It has drawers in it. A little side tray right there so if I want to I can ratchet it up and have it at an angle all right so we're gonna move most most of this the things I need time to clean up over to this one and I do have some compartments on the side here I can use as well but I might still use some other things like the the cops I might get some other things for it some trays that kind of thing so okay all right so the next time you see me doing some building it'll be on this right here all right All right, so as you saw from the previous stills, I started to detail the little bits and pieces, which is pretty much all that's left to get this section all done. And uh, I also showed my new workstation, which I really, really love. I got some little plastic tubs and I Velcroed them down onto the sides. They can be removed and I can put things in it like pens and uh, filing boards and my cutting or my um, X-Acto knife, paintbrushes, things like that. All right, so I really love this new workstation. It's, it's a lot easier to use, a lot less cluttered. And I'm trying to keep it cleaned up as I go. So once I'm done, I'll clean these little bits and pieces up. So, all right, so here's some of the detail that I've made. I'm trying to fill in these little open areas here and I'm still gonna do some more piping. 
have some delicate little um, round stalk on some of these. Little piece right there. I made that little section and I have like some grilled parts inside of it. Alright, so I definitely wanted to have a lot of machinery on the surfaces. I did get that piece all cleaned out like I said so that fits nice and snugly down inside. So both of the arms do. So they retract nicely up against the ship. All right, so let me work on a little bit more detail and fill in these little corners and these other edges. I get to build up this side a little bit more too, a little bit more over here. All right, and then this section will be uh, completed with the detailing, and then I'm going to start doing some painting. All right, and here is the finished detailing of my front uh, door bays or alcove window bays. Uh, so I'm getting ready to do a, a paint test, but let me show you some of the detailing that I did. I did quite a bit, and I didn't film it all because it was quite a bit of time spent on it and a bunch of different pieces. So, But you can see, you really don't have any spots that do not have detail in them which is what I wanted for the Borg ship and I'll show you those side panels here in a minute okay and there's the right one all right and of course I have my extendable arms up as well okay all right now for the side panels they're all nicely detailed as well I'm sorry the side sections because on the on the uh, right side of this you're gonna have another extending out raised panel like you have here and that's gonna be the theme throughout this ship they're gonna be Raised panels with detail, there are going to be sections in between that go inside and have machinery in them. All right. Sorry, we get around here. I can switch that here a second. Okay, so the same thing there. Now, what I've done is I just have tacked on a piece of styrene to the side of each of these, just so I can leave that side unpainted, because it's gonna glue on to the next panel. All right, and I painted, a, I, I taped off the rest of the ship, because I wanna have clean plastic to glue the other parts of the panels onto to build it up. There's the bottoms of them. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these painted. Uh, kind of a test, but it's gonna obviously be the permanent paint of it. So the first thing I'm gonna start with is a painting, a coating of flat black, so I get a lot of black down into the detail of the kit. All right, so let me go ahead and, uh, and we'll get that done on the, on the black.
All right, and then here's the final coat on top. As the previous stills showed, I started with a flat black, and then uh, once that dried, I put on a very light gray, and all I did was I had put a little bit of gray into a bottle of, to me, a white, flat white, and sprayed it over it, so a lot of the detail stayed in, in the crevices. And then I went over it again with a dark gray from Tamiya to give it the final look. And I've been doing some, uh, a little bit of highlighting with some, some metallics. I used some Tamiya Weathering Master on some of them, but I wasn't quite as, as happy with the results. So I just used uh, a dry brush of some of the chrome silver and some uh, gunmetal. And you can see some of the pipes and some of the areas are, are different uh, metallic looks. All right, so this is just the initial look for now. This is gonna be more detailing. Once I get the rest of the paneling done on the bottom sphere, I'm gonna do some, some washes with some, um, some oils, that kind of thing, to give it more of that grungy look. But I think it's looking pretty cool so far. All right, so let me go ahead, I wanna put the, um, the interior in with the lights and kind of get an idea of what that's going to look like uh, with the, the painting on there now. Okay. All right. And there's kind of a test fitting of the interior to the alcove bay, as I've been calling it, with the lights on it. I'm still trying to work out the positioning of it, but that's kind of where I want it to be, where it'll be low enough that you can see it through the um, through the windows here okay and I'll be doing more detailing on the outside of this with some oils and that sort of thing once I get the um, the rest of it done on the command sphere but that's looking pretty awesome okay so um, let me show you one more shot with the claws extended all right, there we go. So looking fairly menacing, the claw sticking out from the ship. So, okay. So that's gonna wrap up uh, this, um, this build part. Lots of great progress. So I'm gonna continue on working on the um, bottom of the sphere and adding the other detail on it. And once I get that completed, I'll go ahead and start working on the top sphere some more. I have parts already completed, but, but this is the general idea of what we're going to see. Okay, so thank you to all my new subscribers. Uh, stay tuned. I'm definitely working very heavily on this kit and um, working to complete the, um, the command sphere. Okay.